hello. We're here. The B-side word. Back for another week. Sorry that we've been away. I hope you all have missed us. But I'm Emma. I'm here with... Devin. And... CJ. And... Maxi. And... Alex. Woo, woo. <laughs> hey. All right. So, I reckon I'm going to start it this week. And basically, <laughs> this article is titled Man Spikes Colleagues with LSD to Remove Negative Energy from Workplace. That's how you do it. <laughs> CJ. <laughs> so basically, that's that's what it is in a nutshell. This guy, I think he didn't spike all of his colleagues. There was two or three colleagues that he just found to be just, you know, negative and he wanted to perk them up a bit or make them more productive and therefore... Yeah, he made them more productive. <laughs> he... They looked at the wolf three hours going, ooh, moving. Well, <laughs> so he actually put in their drinks. I think he spiked their coffee or something like that. Wasn't it, wasn't it a cake? No, this no. is not the cake one. Did he... Cake. Did he mic? Was it like a microdose, like not a full dose? No, but we will get to that. Okay. So with this guy, he actually, um, it doesn't say whether this particular one was a microdose or not, but he put it in their drinks, I think, and um, I think that other colleagues had to call the ambulance because these particular colleagues were sort of shaking and feeling not at all with it. Of course, and they're on, on acid. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> after the second colleague showed up at hospital, they investigated it further and this guy admitted it, Be- before, I guess. Before we get into the drug part, the reason why this came, like I really wanted to for this article to come onto the podcast because everywhere you go, there's always a complainer. There's every time, like, it, no matter how good the situation is, there's always some person that's like, this is shite. And I'm like, man, this, you could be on a roller coaster. He goes, not fast enough. This is not scary enough. Like, it's, it, I'm not, it freaking shits me the amount of people that complain about stupid shit. So, you want to go through the world and dosing people up with Leslie? No, I just want to, like, give them, a, like, a, I wish I had a wand and go, be happy. Be happy. Be happy. <laughs> Be happy. So you're on the you're on the side of the the 19 year old boy that I, that, I like, the intention you're on his side. the intention the actual um action I don't execution the execution like, I'm not <laughs> but I love the intention behind it to uh, to like, drug people to make them happy <laughs> to see the world differently. Well, that's all right. Can you think of a can yeah, you think of a better that... alternative? Um, if, it that... if it wasn't LSD, how else could you perk them up without uh without actually drugging them? As as extra big smile, like to get an instant response like that, Maxi. I think LSD is the way to go. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Maybe not, not that we're promoting dragging people or anything. Maybe cannabis. Well, I was going to say the alternative version. If you're going to go down the drug route, and this is quite funny because I, again, Twitter, my source of everything. <laughs> there was someone on that who did something very similar. Um, what did they do? But for a different reason. But I feel like it would accomplish the happiness a bit better. They took in brownies that they'd cooked yeah. with marijuana yeah. in them mm. but they did it because they they were going to fail their drug test so they said fire fire everyone just see what happens i saw, <laughs> I saw that one i saw that one <laughs> if i'm going if they, i'm going i'm taking they, they everyone with me in the hope they would get fired so no. no they so basically they smoke so they brought in brownies they cooked with marijuana in so that everyone would eat them and if they did a drug mm. test everyone would fail everyone would fail and they said they're that's not gonna right. fire everyone <laughs> that's, smart. that's pretty oh, genius. That's clever. So if you're like, oh no, I've got weed in my system, let's put it in everybody's yeah. system. <laughs> <laughs> <And now we're... laughs> oh my oh, god! Brilliant. And just go. It must be in the water. <laughs> I'm gonna sue the company. Must be in the water. <laughs> Party at my place. <laughs> well, this guy used LSD because apparently it's colorless and it's tasteless. And just to um, get it right, he actually put it in two of the workers' water bottles and in a third person's coffee. Um, but yeah, getting back onto that micro dosing, Alexander, I hadn't heard about it before this article, but apparently it's really popular, particularly in like Silicon Valley and stuff like that, um, where people give themselves like a very small amount of LSD because it doesn't bring on the hallucinations or the high, but it makes them extremely proactive at work. I'd never heard of it. Yeah. So a lot of people do it with their breakfast, they'll microdose and then throughout the day they... For them, they claim that it makes them more productive. Person. So it's just like a more extreme version of coffee, which is what 
nearly every single one of my colleagues does every day at work anyway. Drink coffee. But the, uh, and it's... It says it's actually um, uh, LSD is reported to have been tested for treatment for anxiety and depression as well. So he might have been he might have been onto something. This guy sounds like he could be a uh, switched on character, should we say? <laughs> yeah, like, like L- LSD when taken in massive doses is not good, right? Do you see these people? They go on massive trips. Right? Yeah, and then they jump, jump off, think they can fly and jump off a building or something. So these. All right, mo- okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Before you hang continue, on, is LSD acid? This is a point. Yeah. yeah. This is a point I want to talk about. Okay. Because we, what, what CJ just said. Because we talked about, I've forgotten who I was talking about with this, but we were saying all these stories that you hear about all these things these people do, how many of them have you actually seen that these things have happened? Or how many have just been stories you've been told by older people? No, that one, or there was that or... guy that dreamt off the balcony at the concert and it was on video, like I've seen the footage, and he was on acid and he jumps off this high balcony at this concert and like free falls. I think I've talked about this before. Is like, what do you call it when guy? you jump off the stage? Uh, crowd surfing. surfing. Crowd surfing. Sur- crowd, surfing. crowd surfing, but from a massive high balcony. And he jumps off expecting people to, he thought he could fly. And he just landed on the concrete floor. You, you're, are you talking about the black, the performer? Or no. just a, like a fan? No, I was no. Say, that, happened, that happened to a performer, but he does it all the time. But one time it, they just didn't catch him. I oh. saw that as well. I did see that. <laughs> um, but yeah, but okay, really so anyway. that's 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 one story. How many more are there? I've, we've there's heard a heaps, few, few on the news here of heaps. people being on. Um, no, acid there's not. I don't. I don't think there is. I think it's. I. I'm not saying. I genuinely believe that this is just a scare tactic. I don't it, it, because it's it, the same thing you hear about marijuana. All these crazy stories about marijuana, but none of them are true. I don't that's hear any from that. I don't, I don't hear that much of yeah, marijuana. Yeah, there's not crazy stories of marijuana. No, I don't. No, in terms like any... propaganda wise, like if you uh, not in our oh, day, right, but if right. you go back propaganda wise, that's what I think they've done with things like LSD because you you talk about Silicon Valley, one of the most sort of uh, what's the, like forward thinking places, or, and it's yeah. something that that they use quite commonly there. It is, um, um, yeah, but it's not. But again, if, for example that netflix show that talked about what's that pill that they take a lot in um america ecstasy no it's for Molly. it's prescribed for Academy? adhd Ad- um Dixies. Oh, adderall adderall, adderall. Oh, we, we have a uh, straight i think they're called dexies i right? took adderall oh, dexies. Yeah, yeah, yeah dexies so there's in america that's like a thing that just like so many students do they take adderall that's a lot of parents yeah. even encourage it but that is not a legal drug and unless it's prescribed to you, right? Um, but everyone takes it there. Like even teachers are saying, "Oh, I, I think took you're." It. Yeah, but I like... took I took it at uni, loads. Yeah, so how do you how, how do Why? you get it? How did you get it? Because someone would get it and then just give it out to everyone. Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, so, they help you focus. Is that the reason? Why? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like yeah. that movie. What's it called? Limitless. Limitless or something. Well, it's n- nothing. No, it's like not that, like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. It just keeps it's you like away from studying. Like that, Alex. A low, a lower it's, like that, it's supposed sure. to start. It's supposed to. It's supposed to basically when you when you choose to focus <laughs> on something, you lock into it instead of getting distracted. <laughs> yes, but what I'm saying is, it's kind of like that. But that doesn't make it good or that it's fine to do it. Um, it's can, just something that's because me, there's so but, many side effects from these things. Like but with me the and Adderall. You have the complete opposite opinion on drugs. No, but with the like, Adderall, the complete opposite. <laughs> There's been a load and load, of, so many side effects and issues, health issues that have come up because all these kids have started taking Adderall from school, even primary school age, right? Um, where the teachers yeah. and everyone's getting them on it because they're like, oh, well, if everyone else is doing it and it's making them proactive and the teachers are loving it because the kids aren't playing up in class, et cetera, et cetera. And then everyone's doing it because they think, oh, you know, why are you, not? Are you saying it's a Band-Aid? It's just a band aid. No, fix? it's just like this thing to do because either it's cool or people think you, you know they they need it to be able to work efficiently. But no one looks at the side effects, and the LSD thing is probably similar. There's obviously got to be some side effects, no? Whenever you put anything into your system, there's always going to be a side effect, regardless yeah. of what it is. Food has yeah. side effects. Co- coffee, coffee's gone mad. Would you, would you, as like you know the health conscious person you are? recommend to someone or a client or something that they microdose with LSD? I would recommend microdosing LSD before I'd recommend most pharmaceuticals you get prescribed. I just don't know. I would, do you, I would do you also, say that, Alex, do you say I that as also, in like a principle, are you saying that as a principle as in like something being illegal and illegal, legal or illegal doesn't phase you, 
No, but like, how, yeah, how much, do you much. know a lot about LSD? Like I'm saying, like there might be a lot you don't know. So the moment you would recommend, there could it. be a lot I don't know. At the same time, it's something that I have paid attention to. And when you look at the way they're going with the research with it, because it's only something recently they've been allowed to research. Yeah. Um, and even then, it's still not. Like there's there's definitely not enough information on it, but what I the reason I would say that over a lot of prescribed pharmaceuticals is because there's a lot of information on prescribed pharmaceuticals that show they're actually not good for you. Like Emma was talking about Adderall, but um, also with yeah. pres- with prescribed pharmaceuticals, there's been a lot more in depth research on them because of how widespread they are. No, Whereas, that, no, as no, no, you, no said, you can't you can't confuse research with um, paid. I don't know how to word this. Paid. You can't confuse research with propaganda. What's, what's, is what you. Well, okay, research is one minute about, warning. Especially, especially in the drug community, is propaganda because it's only being conducted by the people who want the drug to go through. It's not being yeah. conducted by other people. Okay. So that's why, I like, for example, when, you, uh, like Max has said, to me, legal versus illegal doesn't make a difference. Like, a drug is a drug, regardless of whether you want to make it legal or illegal. But you look at something like marijuana. Marijuana is a completely untampered drug. Like, there is no human. Um, you, you, you can get a tampered. involvement yeah. in that. No, but there's it, there's no human involvement in the process of making marijuana. Like, as you, in, it's you not synthetic. It, like, like you do with crops. Yeah, like you don't need a lab. <laughs> yeah, but then all these. I can make wheat here, and I can make marijuana here. Yeah, yeah, and all these and the pills and stuff. So to me, something that grows from the ground is always going to be safer than something What's... that you. Where's, yeah, but where's, where's, uh, where's well, opium? Well, but where's I opium? Oh, oh, Poppy uh, seeds. I was going to say, doesn't heroin grow from the ground as well? Because opium? Poppy seeds, no. There's a lot of things that grow from the ground that can kill me if I put it in my mouth. No, but it's yeah. obviously, anything that obviously doesn't kill you. Like marijuana, <laughs> there's never been a reported <laughs> death from marijuana. I was gonna say, do you need to say if it grows from the ground? You, can't even, you, you, physically can't even, you physically can't overdose from marijuana. Like that's how... Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying marijuana no, is no, a no, good I'm, or bad plant. I'm just no, saying you, the, the statement saying that growing from the ground, like I wouldn't yeah. say, okay, that grows from the ground, I'm going to take it. No, but I would tr- even regardless. I understand there are poisonous things in the world, but I would still trust something from the ground before I would trust a chemical, something manufactured chemical. So, so, so you, you, you you're trust only opium. Part of the story. No, but that's what he's like, saying. That's what he's saying. It's more he trusts something that's natural more than something that's synthetic, that's made from. Is that, that what you're saying? Way better way to yeah. That's you put it in much better words. <laughs> yeah. So something that's natural instead of man-made. Okay. I, I think that's what he's saying. That's the point. Like I, I yeah. think, well, most things that are like, man-made came from something natural. Yeah, but it's altered then. Like when it's man-made, it's been altered. You to, know what I mean? Bring like, the best things forward. You're cha- they're changing the complete chemical structure of stuff. So when Some, you look sometimes at, to get me, the most out like, of it. I like I mm. think personally, I think medicine will go the way of holistic, because as you're like things as they're allowed to research more things now than they used to be able to. Because when you think about pharmaceuticals, it's, it's not an old industry, it's new. Mm. Um, but there's been a lot of blocks on it. So certain people, you can only research certain stuff, a lot of stuff you're not allowed to research because it's illegal, yada, yada, yada. You can't get the funding. Um, mm. I think as that opens up more, there will be a lot more holistic medicines coming back in. Because if you look historically, that is how we've survived this long, holistic medicines. Yeah. Just to, just to like, um, I, I think to back up Alexander, like I was uh, listening to something where the opium trade, right, was massive back, eight, I'm talking about long, long time, a long, long time ago, the opium trade was massive, right? It got to the point where they got, China was so addicted, the, the people of China were so addicted that the Chinese government said they were, they were blocking these traders from coming in and they just put these massive tariffs so they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to come to China, right? They know that opium is bad. And it was coming from, uh, I think, a lot of senators from America had a lot of, um, what do you call it, stock in the in this opium trade. So they told, oh, no, it was England. I think it was England. It was England. England. And then the Queen took it as a, um, like, you were trying to go up against the crown. And so they decided to send people over to China, right? And they had a war, this massive war. And then China said, sorry. And they allowed all this opium to flood like China again and like let them kill all the, the Chinese people. Cause just cause England came over and said, nah, you're trying to, this is an act of war saying that we can't trade 
you're doing a free trade, like you're going against free trade or something, something along those lines. Yeah. And then even though they knew That's opium a- was bad, they were just flooding it. They're like, and China had said sorry. <laughs> they were like, sorry for putting, trying to protect our people and you trying to kill us, but you can continue now. <laughs> what a story! <laughs> that, I, I, like, that was a big war. That's a that's a big big war in history, right? The Opium War. Yeah, oh, I yeah. don't know. I'm I, I, I know heard it, it, and it wasn't I like not. that's not exactly how it went, but it's like the gist. <laughs> the gist. I think, I, think you, I think that's enough. I think that's enough. I, I don't know much more to be able to expand more. But if you Google <laughs> it, you, the people are listening, then you'll see it's a that was yeah. A big, big Google the Opium history. War. Yeah. One thing, one yeah. last thing I will say before we move on on the natural versus unnatural thing. Like, I understand the argument, but. I, I think it's a lot less black and white in the sense that we today, nowadays, and especially in terms of medicine, we are much in a much better position to like stop diseases and stuff because of synthetic things. Like if, for example, people that don't take vaccines because, oh no, that was built in the lab. We don't know what's in it, blah, 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 blah. Like I would, my kid's still going to have a vaccine. I'm not going to say, actually, I'm not going to have a synthetic drug, but I will give him. So there's a limit. So like, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but there's also a limit to say, but I think- um, what where i where i see it to be when i talk about the future and how things are opening up so something like vaccinations i can understand why in the past we haven't been able to uh, sort of eradicate diseases and stuff now we have these synthetic vaccinations that help us but now you know how to target those things because we have the knowledge to i think they will find holistic versions to be able to protect against these things I like I, the idea i'm not of saying that they exist medicine. now but i think that's the direction things will go because oh, be a- i th- i think it's almost like a like I, I'm looking forward to that day. Gone, can sit down, and watch a movie, and watch in a four different dimension. It was the quickest and easiest way to do it. Like, all right, we need to protect this. How can we do it? The only way we know how is through. Man, I, I, like sound that, but I guess we need to move on, right? I agree with uh, just lastly. I agree with holistic medicines, and I love that if, that if it's going that way. However, um, I don't think like LSD and Adderall is a medicine. That's just something that people are taking to try and have fun. Have fun or try and make themselves more but efficient. Not, uh, expand their mind. I think a very the dangerous opinion is to, have fun. yeah. The very, a very dangerous thing, which, which is happens a lot, is if a drug is fun, then you can't use it for anything else. But oh no, that's bad. You should yeah. use it. Like weed, for example, was a great example of people started using that because it was fun to use. It got great benefits, but because the government went, oh, you know, don't use that because you're doing it in the wrong way. There's so many right ways to use it as well. Yeah, yeah. So, it can be used yeah. as a exactly the same way. If you flip the switch, there's a lot of medicines you get from a doctor, which if you use it in the wrong way, will be really fun to use, but they give it you in a way which you don't use it in that way. So things like LSD, as I said on there, depression and anxiety could be treated for. That maybe is a great drug. Like for us, who doesn't know anything about about it. We're very quick to be like, oh, (laughs) LSD scares, you know. So my article this week has a title which says five ways statistics statistics are used to lie to you every single day. Stat- Why is it hard to say statistics? I don't know. Anyway, so five ways statistics are used to lie to you every day. It's almost uh, as hard as saying man, origins. Now I'm going to say it like that. <laughs> statistics. <laughs> statistics. <laughs> um, which is uh, like this... I imagine quite quickly you might I mean, not Alex actually because Alex is weird but <laughs> most people will hear that and be like that's quite a boring article but I want to like try and uh, put some like everyday scenarios where this comes into play and where you're it makes you think about like should you really believe the numbers that are being like pumped out all the time so one very simple one is like this is the first example they give. Um, it says the average income in the United States is around seventy thousand US dollars per year. Mm, yeah, really? Um, but what but what kind of average are we talking? What was that? What was that? What was that? Say it again. So the average income in the United States is around seventy thousand US dollars per year. What average? As in, what type of average? Yeah, that, this is the point. So that average they use there is the average where you add up everybody's salary. And then you divide it by the number of people in the country. So the mean, right? Yeah. Which means that you can have a few billionaires which skew the average up a lot, like really, really quickly. So the majority of the people in the US might only earn 40,000 US dollars a year or less. Like that could be 70% of them. But because you have 1% which earn a crazy amount of money, which happens to be the case in the US, 
what it does to you is makes you think you're not on enough money. You're like, I'm only on 40,000 US dollars, but you earn more than 60% of US citizens. Uh. If you're, do you know what I mean? But you feel like you're below average, but you're actually, in reality, that's, it's a bad average to use. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it's it's uh, used in a lot of ways. That's um, one very good example. But this one, which I like more, and then I'll stop talking. We can just run away with it. Is um, uh, there's a claim that there's a cancer test which is ninety nine percent accurate. Um, but that is <laughs> true. That it is ninety nine percent accurate, but it's also meaningless because what it's saying is if you have cancer, right? 99% of the time, this test will know if you have cancer. 1% of the time, it will tell you you don't have cancer when you actually do, right? So that's a pretty good test. Like if you have cancer and you go to the doctors, <laughs> 99% of the time, they'll be able to tell you if you have cancer. Cool. Okay. But on the flip side, if you don't have cancer, 1% of the time, they'll tell you you do have cancer, but 99% of the time, they'll tell you you don't have cancer. So if, okay, does that make sense? No. My head hurts. Okay, so if I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to assume right now, right? I'm going to assume right now I, do, I don't have cancer. Okay. Fingers crossed. Touch wood. Yep. I don't have cancer. I go to the hospital. Yeah. And they tell me, I, because the test 99% of the time is right, they're probably going to tell me I don't have cancer. Right. Right? But if a million people go to that same doctor, yep. 1% of them, which happens to be 1,000 people, are going to be told they have cancer when they don't have cancer. Oh. Does that make sense? Way, so that what was, actually that was bad maths. Ten thousand. One thousand. Ten thousand. Uh, yeah, ten thousand. Even More. worse. <laughs> so a million people go to the doctors, and ten thousand of them are told that they now have cancer, but they don't. So they're now taking. They got to tell their family and all the rest of it. So this test is. Wow. So yeah. Although, like you're saying, yeah, but ninety nine percent is a good statistic. What that actually means is because most of the people in the the world don't have cancer, the test is wrong in a bad way. So if the test is wrong in the sense of uh, oh, people have cancer and it gets it wrong and the test is wrong that people don't have cancer but they actually do, then there's actually more wrongs in a... I don't know. This is a bad explanation, but... Uh, there's, there's a lot 10, of 10,000 people to get it wrong every year. Yeah, there's so many there's more wrongs, wrongs than you think. You're like, this yeah. is 99% accurate. Yeah. Um, and the reason why it's so significant is because most people don't have cancer so it's wrong more often than it's significantly right. Right. That makes sense. Yep. It's only important to be right like when there's someone who's got cancer, but there might be 5,000 people that get tested positive for cancer. It's a good test, but then 10,000 people have been told they got cancer when they don't. So it's a bad test, even though right. it's 99% accurate. Right, right, right. So the error, they Does always look sense? at how much the error is. Like they see how bad the error is in it's, the test. It's called like, uh, <coughs> yeah, there's a proper term, uh, term for it. It's called the base rate for uh, fallacy. So if like right. um, you're testing a large population, but you only want to test 1% of them, but you test everybody, then you're going to skew the results because there's 99% of people that don't need to be tested. Right. And where this has come into play, and it's been a really like a uh, political issue is in America, they come up with a test to um, test terrorists. So people come into the country, they can take a load of metrics from them, like where they've lived, uh, what type of activities they do, their online activities, all the rest of it. And they can say to 97% accuracy if they're a terrorist or not. Okay. So if they're actually a terrorist, 97% of the time they get them right. Yes, he's a terrorist. But it turns out that 99.999% of the people that come into America aren't terrorists. But thousands and thousands of those are getting pulled aside because they think they're terrorists yeah. inaccurately and they're getting searched and frisked and everything else. But they're like, yeah, but it's a 99, it's a 97% accurate test. Like, sorry, yeah, you got it right. wrong this time. Do you know what I mean? But they're yeah. not, they don't catch anybody with this test, but they do catch a lot of innocent people, like <laughs> thousands of innocent people. They catch maybe one non-innocent, but like guilty person. Yeah, it's horrible. Sense? I think, yes, that's horrible. Oh, this is a dead article on you. <laughs> no, I think no. my favorite thing, my favorite like um, misuse of statistics is false, like false equivalencies, false correlations. Where yeah. people present some piece of information, present another piece of information and say, well, that obviously causes this. When there's there's no proof of yeah. correlation. It's just like you could you could essentially say, oh, well, if you, if you breathe air, your chances of getting cancer are higher because everyone who's ever had cancer breathes air. Breathe air, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> so the so statistics politicians are just, do this all the time. It, like the, the conclusion are just assumptions then. 
like with these statistics. They're not really conclusions at all. They're sort that's of the just thing. When you, often that's if you look case, at statistics yeah. at any point, a statistic a statistic is just an observation. Yeah. But mm-hmm. what how you any anything gleaned from that is a perspective, not a fact. Yeah. Like it can't be a fact. So it's a bit like it's a bit as dumb fact. as saying, if I punch you in the face, Dev, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you start bleeding. For some stupid reason, some scientists could sit there and say, Dev's face is bleeding. There is a yellow sign behind Dev. Does that mean yellow signs cause faces oh, to bleed? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah. as dumb as saying, like, in a lot of cases, which happens all the, t- like, all the time, it is as dumb as saying that. And the reason it's not pulled up is because it's hidden in a mass array of statistics. You know, like the cause and effect might not necessarily cause and effect are different to correlation. You know, you know, yeah. with or with the explosion of information, mm. the the back in the day when someone told you like um, seven out of ten dentists would um, would recommend this like Colgate and stuff, and all like like you said, like ninety nine point nine percent, it'll like this will kill the germs, right on your yeah, and you're like, oh, mad ninety nine. <laughs> but the way you put it this way, it's like, how about that 0.1% now? Uh, is that going to kill me? Is that, yeah, <laughs> are no. you not killing the ones so the that are going to kill me? You, I can explain <laughs> both of those nicely. The bacteria one, they say 99.9% because every test they do, they kill all bacteria, but they're not allowed to say 100%. Like, oh. Legally. It's just like, you can't say 100% because we don't, there could be some tiny thing that our test doesn't cover that we don't. So they just say 99.9%. But the, um, wait, what was the other one? The dentist. The, the dentist. Oh, the dentist one. When they have those surveys, right, they say at the bottom, here's a five different toothpaste. Which one of these wouldn't you recommend? <laughs> and then <laughs> they will say, oh, they're all okay. And they say, oh, 10 out of 10 dentists would recommend, like nobody <laughs> ever slashes their one off. They, they, uh. they do the questionnaire in such a way that they're like, so they'll say uh. Colgate, I mean, I, I'm run, I've run out of toothpaste already. <laughs> One minute warning. You got crest. So, okay. Colgate, Oriel, I don't know, because, Tiger Teeth. Because this is a statistics article, I want to put this out to anyone in the audience, see if they can give some clarity. Something that I've talked to Maxi about before is the significance of statistics. Like if you take, um, if you take coin flips and you said, all right, if I flipped a coin five times, or six times to make it an even number. Is is that enough to draw a conclusion? Like if you wanted to say, I flipped it six times, these are how many heads, these are how many tails. So statistically, this is how many times you're likely to get a head, this is how many times you're likely to get a tail. Like most people would say, that's six, six flips, no, that's not enough, you need to do it more times. So my question is, how many is enough? At what point do we say, mm. that gives you an accurate an accurate view of the world? Enough of you, enough so that it gives you a peace of mind, like personally, without without like imposing on anyone else. As long as it pe- gives you a peace of mind, eh, six is enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I have another tweet. Now this one's not so much about the words; it's just about the video. It's just Lake. Bury it. I'm going to butcher this. Berryessa, I think, USA. And this video is of an aerial view of this lake that's next to a road and meters into the lake is this giant, like, sinkhole where all the water's just pouring into it. And it's almost like a, it looks like a perfect, smooth sinkhole. And it just, I live in the middle of England. We don't have things like that here. It blew my mind to see something like that exist in the world because I have so many questions about what's going on here that it just made me want to look at other weird and wonderful things in the world. So I've pulled out a list of some amazing things. I don't know if you guys have ever personally witnessed anything that you think is just like the sort of blown your mind, whether it's natural or We live in Australia. Or... Everything's beautiful here. <laughs> have you ever seen Ayers Rock? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it like <laughs> on pictures? Is it and a stuff? sight to be seen? Yeah. You can't. <laughs> you can't climb Ayers Rock anymore. You can't climb. But you Ayers can. Rock. S- you can go to it. No? You right. can. You can go to it. Um, Why is it a sight to be seen? Climb it? Or like, would you recommend? Would I recommend? I don't know. I've never been, but yeah. Re- Re- yeah, go. I, I recommend if you go, take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> Ayers Rock. Yeah. Well, there was some 
some pretty cool ones I saw. One of the ones that I really liked was the Giants Causeway in Northern Ireland. Um, now, this is the explanation they've given. 60 million years ago, a huge volcanic eruption spewed out a massive molten basalt, basalt, I don't know how you say that, um, which then solidified and contracted as it cooled, creating the cracks that can be seen today. Um, now, this thing, I have no idea how to explain it other than on the coast, just imagine rocks, but they're sort of uh, pillars. They're, they're built up into these rectangular pillars and they're all put together and they're all different heights. Um, so I'm going to send you guys, anyone listening, this is the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. Have a, have a look at it and see what you think. Um, but it's, it, the fact that they've come up with an explanation of something that happened 60 million years ago, I like, all right, whatever. But how, how does this form? Even if that explanation is true, that still doesn't explain to me personally. I still don't understand how it looks like this. So, um, Yes. So there are uh, there are a lot of beautiful places around the world. Are you more attracted so I, to like because there's the Seven Wonders, right? And then yes. are you are you attracted to like naturally Name formed them. beauties? More so, yeah. Then I like, say that two thi- two things: naturally formed beauties, I really want to see, um, and then the other things I want to see are statues of the world. Statues. Like, Statues. Yeah, there are some epic statues that I never knew existed. Like, and I'd love like to the lady. See them. What's the lady at uh, Le- Liberty? The Liberty person. Statue of Liberty. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> see, was the lady? I would like to see that, but that was never. That wasn't like on my sort of, I guess, list of things. What's, um, what what's like, statues? So there are. There, all right, I'm gonna find some of these. You statues. Say what's a statue, Deb? No, I'm just thinking what statues Alexander would love to see. Like there's no, so, I don't, there's, there's no mm, nothing come to there's mind. There's one in, there's the one in the Bahamas that is a person and it's underwater. You have to scuba dive to go see, which would be quite cool. Okay. There's Why is it underwater? One... Why? I don't know. I don't know the history of it. Um, they dropped it. But it's, it looks cool. <laughs> they were taking it off the boat and they <laughs> dropped it. So like what my, th- I guess, thought on these things are like, these, these statues are not small either. These, these are giant Massive. <laughs> and I yeah. yeah. But it's like, the the whole i guess uh process of making a statue and even not just statues even like just giant pieces of art like you see farmers do them and stuff like that on their on their fields like scarecrows i don't understand how scarecrows did you say farmers yeah like there's been farmers there was one who just made one for who was it they did someone's head it was like a giant like a- it was like a coin it was like a Whose was it? I'm gonna look that one up. Um, but it's this: how how do you have the perspective in order to be able to make them like proportionate and things mm-hmm. like? I find that uh, like these giant statues. How do you cut? I can't even draw a face. Yeah. How can I carve one into stone and in such a scale and still make it look like a person? Making the invisible visible. Hey, make uh, making the invisible visible visible. Yeah, because it's in your head, right? It's your imagination in your yeah. head, and you're like, oh, "I'm gonna put this as a statue," because that's what so, it yeah, is. So yeah, right? so like, mm. so to me, I always like, we talked about art the other week, but like realism, art, and stuff like that, I really appreciate because to me, that I can't, I have so many thoughts in my head, so many vivid images that I, I can't replicate. There's no way for me to replicate them anywhere. To be able to do that as an artist, to me, is an unbelievable skill. But then when you go, to me, statue is like another step further because that is such a more difficult medium to work with. And then when you think about the scales of it, because it like, can't, like using chisel or however you want to yeah. do it, to me, is harder than using your Like if you think about doing anything where you have to use a tool, it makes it harder than just using your hand. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so the closer you are to the thing that you're doing with your hand, the easier it is to do. You know what that mm. you, you just it popped in my head was Richie Rich. You know how they've got that um the like they they got their faces on the mountain and they use this laser yeah. the laser to carve out the. Have you ever, have you do you remember Richie Rich? Yeah, yeah I love yeah. that uh, and, movie. And the artist is like using a laser beam, which is not real, but like he's using a laser beam <laughs> to carve out the um the faces of the family. Yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's crazy. The qu- the question I have for you, Alexander, is that yeah. are you are you do you find 
like the Taj Mahal and the the pyramids less impressive than the statues? No, 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 no. I want to see the pyramids of the world. That's something I want to do as well. Okay. One minute warning. Um, I get mixed Taj reviews Mahal, about the pyramids. Well, I want to see. I the ones that I really want to see most is Chichen Itza because of the I, Who? I like. I want to go there as summer solstice. Chichen Itza is the pyramids in Mexico. Oh, um, but they have they have the stones outside them, and on, I think it's on summer solstice. the The light hits it in such a way that a snake shadow forms across the different pyramids. Uh huh. And like to me, the That's foresight kind of to be able to do that is unbelievable. Like so, things like that are made. So there are man made things that amaze me. But the I guess the reason that I sort of would prioritize seeing natural things first is because. Like um, a a man has intention. The the earth doesn't have intention. It just does what it does. So that's the Mm -hmm. fact that it can create these amazing things is even more impressive. It's like doing it by accident. Yeah. Um, Here's a here's a thought. Here's a thought. This is one of my friends sent this to me. He said like something to do with conscious, right? You're conscious. Um. So like, can can you uh give me a definition of conscious or where conscious comes from? No. Nope. No one can. <laughs> do, do you feel? Do you feel like it? Cut like it in like to the best of your knowledge. Do you think it comes from your brain to like create? The, like to like. Do you think it pops? Like okay. So his definition was that. <laughs> I, I can't. Ex- I can't explain it. His definition was the TV. Uh, the brain is the TV, and the conscious is a like a a message coming from external into the and it displays. It, this was on Joe Rogan. Oh, it was on Joe Rogan. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. So he, he this mother, f- he he made it out like it was his bloody thought. Anyways, <laughs> so <laughs> he's come and he's saying that it's a TV and it's maybe he did make it up and Joe Rogan just copied him. Um, <laughs> um, but when he said that, you're right, tu- you're tuning into a frequency. Yeah. So when that's the like, basis of it. When, when my friend said that to me, I was just like, I was like, I was like, bang! It hit me, and I was like, what the. F- I'm not coming up with this. Someone's feeding it to me. I was like, I was, I was, I was like, what? This is, this is incredible. What, well, the, what so, the freak are you talking about? So I think it's, <laughs> I think the concept is based more around the idea that, um, think. So imagine the, imagine there's parallel universes, for example, and Uh-oh. you're. This is a world, that, the Earth that we <laughs> live in right now. This. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Earth that we live in right now is just your, your. St- it's still you in your head. It's still your consciousness, but your consciousness is just tuned in to what's this particular yeah. body and what's going on here. Yeah. So you're still interacting it with your control and all that kind of stuff. But it's just the idea that the consciousness isn't generated here. It's it's somewhere else. But this is just a body that can pick, like we're the radio oh. that picks up the signal. So do you reckon the like the more positive people their frequencies are like at five thousand or se- like seven thousand hertz or whatever? <laughs> Look, is that is that a, is that a thing? Yeah, could that be a thing? Uh, <laughs> I think it would be more along. I I, I think I think it'd have to be idea... over twenty thousand because because um over we can't hear sound. things. See, we can't hear things. You know what I mean? Because think... sound the... we can't hear things over twenty thousand. So it has to be over 20,000. Yeah. So I'm like channel seven would be about like 44 or something, 44,000. And it's beaming into me because <laughs> it's subconscious now. It's not through sound. You know what I mean? See, yeah. you just made me think. Oh, the, <laughs> the, the spectrums of senses I always find interesting as well. So like you just talking about sound. We have a spectrum that we can hear in. Yeah. But there's things, there are definite sounds that happen that we just can't hear. Yeah, like dogs. Yeah. Like dogs go crazy right. over, yeah. I can hear dogs. What are you talking about? No, <laughs> oh, man. you're better yeah. than that. <laughs> if you think, if you take, if you take other senses and apply the same spectrums to them, yeah. So think like sight. There are things that we just can't see. Yeah, but they're there. Yeah. So I just wonder, like, if you multiply that across the, all the different senses we have, like, how much of the world are we just not experiencing? Heaps. There? A lot. Heaps. And I don't mean like I don't mean like you have to travel to. I mean like. In in the room you're in right now, yeah. What stuff is there? That and that's just, just and that's no just the senses. About. That's the spectrum of the senses we have. Let yeah. alone all the yeah. senses of animals that we don't even have. We have zero. Like that's just like just to put it in perspective. Uh, like perspective. Just to give an example, people that are colorblind, people that can't see like yeah. a red, green, and uh, red, green. What's the other Aren't color? You? No, you're not. No, I'm an electrician. Are you? 
No, electrician. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. That's what I, I, for some reason I thought you were. Then I went, no, he's an electrician. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it green and blue? <laughs> like, I uh, know it's, it's red. Different depending on the person. Red, black, and green. But, okay. Red, black, and green. But no, yeah, yeah it's yeah. It, it, but if we had um the reason, but we have the spectrum for a reason, right? If we have too many senses, then it's complicated. Needs more brain processing power. That we only use the ones that we. But think bearing we use in mind, for. bearing in mind that we, uh, at least from my understanding, have the most powerful brain on the planet. So, but we have know, less senses than other creatures. So the brain, right? I'm trying yeah. to like I try to put it in computing terms, like so the brain is our storage plus our CPU. And like <laughs> the way we do the conscious and subconscious is the RAM, right? Like how, how quick we can do the subconscious into the conscious. Like if your RAM is like 32, then you can transfer that and put that into reality. <laughs> Whereas like if your subconscious and your link to your conscious is shit, you got like eight gig RAM or four gig RAM and you're, it doesn't matter how <laughs> fast your processor is. Like it doesn't matter if you've got a like i9, eight core freaking cpu if your freaking ram's only four gigabytes you, you're running on shit anyway right like you just that that link between the subconscious and the conscious is like you gotta that has to be a, at a fast rate hey, you know what i mean like if you can only handle one piece of information between the subconscious and the conscious then it doesn't matter how big your cpu or your storage is it's just going to be feeding it trickle feeding it so maybe we have to like upgrade our ram to be like 128 gigabytes and then we'll kill it. Oh, it's a gigabyte RAM. But maybe oh, that's whatever. why. Maybe 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 that's why we're better than animals because we just have better RAM. They just have like really bad RAM. Who like dogs are like who food? That's all they can focus on. Who <laughs> ball? Oh <laughs> water. But we're like we take it all in. We got this RAM that just can take. We got like twenty windows open at the same time. <laughs> that's a problem. We're like we're just we're just scrolling between the tabs. Like yeah, which one should I do now? <laughs> I was trying to figure it out. I was trying to put it in context, but I don't know. Uh, do you? All right. Yeah. Where do you think? Where do you think consciousness stems from? Don't not get, don't need explanation. It's just curious. What I said. There's a frequency that comes to your brain, and it's a TV. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a part of the body, would you just assume brain? So Maxi Maxi Liver. said this before. <laughs> Maxi said this before about imagine your consciousness was or was it conscious or your brain was in your stomach? Remember when you said that? Imagine like that yeah. it, and I was like, I don't know now. Like with all these conversations that we have, I don't know anything that's real anymore. And the statistics are out the window now. Everything I see is just like, what the, f no, nah, I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm just walking away. <laughs> but Alex, I'm interested to see your view on this because I was telling um, uh, them that in your liver, I think it's your liver, I still don't agree with this, but in your liver, like the, the amount of neurons that goes on in your liver, you can you could technically say that's its own brain. Like it's so complex, the decisions it makes independently of our actual brain that you could technically that is its own brain right and because you can compare it to other animals right that is as complex as that animal so you say okay that is its own brain but then you would say instantly that that brain doesn't have a consciousness because you know why why would it but then if it did have a consciousness you wouldn't know because it, it can't tell you he has a consciousness so your liver could have a consciousness but then that made me think well what if your consciousness is actually your liver's consciousness <laughs> oh shit and then your brain's consciousness is like a different con yeah. like do you know well, what i mean like this, this, this is like the graph goes, all over again. I'm thinking about uh, plants. So you know, I think it was in I think I think it was in David Attenborough's book because when I was in doing my, this is when I was doing A level biology. Um, they brought out they talked about this study. They referenced this study where if you communicate positively to plants, they grow better, and if you communicate That's negatively to them, they can die. Um, and it was just, it was a study where they treated the plants the same. They gave them the same nutrients, all the same sunlight, all this different stuff. But the only difference was what they said to the, like literally talked at the plant. Has that been proved? I've seen that been proved well, otherwise as well. It was in David Attenborough's, David Attenborough's book, which doesn't mean anything, but I assume there's, <laughs> I, the I, no. <laughs> I assume there's an extent of research gone into it, but no, I don't, I personally, I don't think it proves anything, but I think it begs a fascinating question. Because that, to me, would be more of a, I guess, consciousness response mm. than a well, biological response. Okay, everyone. Keep listening to the B-Side Word. Rate, review, leave comments, subscribe, like our Instagram page, like our Facebook page, tell your friends, share. Bye.